Good afternoon. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. I'm also a delegate for Bernie Sanders and a progressive activist, I guess you would say. I've been a research engineer in the past uh, and a journalist. And tonight I'd like to help you folks deal with your carbon budget. I think you can learn a lot by studying the household carbon budget. Now, uh, the greater existential problem of extinction from global heating may not be something that um, personal behavior can really solve, but we can learn a lot through analyzing how uh, the carbon uh, gases emitted into our atmosphere uh, are affected by individual households. So with that said, I will share my screen and go through some things with you folks. So first of all, there's a very interesting, uh, it turned out what I found out, I'm sort of starting at the end. Um, I found out that food is extremely big part of our carbon footprint. I'll go into that later. Um, this is an article and this uh, spreadsheet I was showing you earlier, I will put in the link and you can copy it to use it for your own purposes. So this document here is the key document for uh, looking at food patterns. So let's take a look. So for each kilo or pound of beef consumed, 60 kilos or pounds of carbon, uh, CO2, are emitted into the atmosphere. Um, most of this occurs, as it says, methane production from cows and land conversion for grazing and animal feed. Means beef from dedicated beef herbs, herds have a very high carbon footprint. Then you see lamb and mutton, it drops considerably because of, basically because of not emitting the methane, one would presume. Cheese has a big impact because of the methane combined with the uh, grazing you conversion of land use. Um, and then we see a dairy herd is, is b far better than a beef herd to eat meat from. Uh, then if we look at chocolate, this is land use change, the green. So that's the impact of cocoa is land use change. Coffee, it's uh, farming. Um, it might be the fertilizers. I'm, I'm not certain. Farm prawns, not so good. Uh, pig meat, uh, uh, relatively promising in terms of uh, emissions, I suppose. Eggs, much better than pig. Um, and um, then we get down into the really low emitting. So example, low, uh, wild fish, it's a very tiny percentage of the carbon footprint is transport. So this whole idea about transport, as you see, it's actually a very small part, it's the red. So you can look at this later on your own, um, but obviously, I mean, citrus fruit, uh, you have three pounds of, uh, of food for every one pound of carbon emitted, for example, root vegetables, apples, bananas. Uh, so very interesting. Um, so really, your diet can make a huge impact on your um, carbon footprint. So I had gone through the household uh, and allocated a monthly uh, budget for us of a total for four people of um, 110 kilos of food a month. I hope that will be enough for us. And uh, 448 kilos of uh, carbon emissions as a result. But a big part of that is making sure we have very little beef um, and probably reducing our cheese consumption. Um, so if we go to the household carbon budget, uh, let me uh, put that in the spreadsheet right now. Copy and paste. So that way you can just access this one document. So in this case, each uh, uh, we determine on average the food we eat produces four pounds of CO2 for every pound of food um, uh, on average. Uh, the units would be 10 pounds a day, 30 pounds a month. Uh, I'm sorry, um, 30 days in a month. So that's about 300 pounds at four pounds average emission. That's 1,222 pounds for our household of CO2 a month. 
Then the second issue is uh, our use of natural gas. Uh, we have a gas uh, uh, heater, uh, we have a gas stove, and we have a gas uh, uh, washer dryer. Um, so we are at an average of 11.7 pounds of CO2 um, for each therm. Uh, because, and to do this, uh, well, with therms, it's, it's straightforward enough, it's natural gas. So for, uh, it's 11.7 pounds of CO2 per therm of uh, natural gas. So we end up with 892 pounds, and obviously improving our insulation would help with that. So that's a significant cost. Then we have um, our electricity use. And since we have an electric car as our primary car, um, we use more electricity than the average household and less gas. So we have, a, for each kilowatt of uh, electricity, uh, in California, it's a half a pound of carbon. And uh, with a typical electric car, you get around three to four miles per kilowatt. So that means that you get about six to eight miles um, per pound of CO2. Now, a normal gas car getting 20 miles per gallon gets uh, emits about uh, uh, 20 pounds of CO2 per gallon. A gallon gas converts to 20 pounds of CO2 because there's eight pounds in a gallon of gas. And because you have to then bind it, each uh, uh, atom of carbon to two atoms of oxygen, you end up with 20 pounds of CO2 from this eight pounds of carbon. So a, a, a normal car that only gets 20 miles per gallon is a pound of CO2 a mile. Uh, you know, an efficient car, a hybrid might be uh, uh, half of that, 40 miles a gallon or half a pound. And an electric car is at about an eighth of a pound per mile. Now, obviously the problem with electric cars is the manufacturer. So um, the manufacturer is equivalent to between 35,000 and 70,000 miles. It's about 35,000 pounds of CO2 to manufacture an electric car. So you don't really break even over a gas car until you hit 35,000 miles. So the, the, you know, the most friendly method of um, doing this was to buy the used uh, Chevy Bolt, uh, which I found uh, at around $15,000 with about 25,000 miles on them. So you basically, uh, and they get about 232 uh, miles of range. Um, the Teslas are still uh, much more than $15,000 used. So the Chevy Bolt is the ideal, relatively long range car, 232 miles of range. And then right now the Fiat 500e is extremely cheap. Uh, although uh, easy to find in California, uh, I'm not so sure in other parts of the country since the Fiat 500e was made with a limited production. You can get these for around $6,000 um, used and they've only got an 80 mile range though. So basically for short commutes. Um, and then you've got the gas car here. So we do have a gas car. Um, and so I put in the calculations here, uh, 20 days a month at 20 miles a day. My daughter is the main one who drives a gas car. So that produces 400 pounds of um, CO2 a month on that projection. Um, and then there's trees. So trees produce, uh, absorb on average around a mature tree around 48 pounds of CO2 a month. So we have 13 trees on our lot. And somehow or another, I ended up with minus 52 uh, because maybe this 48 is per year because I'm dividing by 12. So let's just take a quick look at the calculation. Yeah, number of trees. Yeah, so I think this is an annual figure. So I may be wrong here. Um, it may be a monthly figure. Um, I will pause and double check and correct that. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's only 48 pounds of CO2 a year uh, uh, for a mature tree. So going back to our calculator, um, that only uh, offsets us by 52 pounds a month. Then there's our breathing. So the average human uh, emits 2.3 pounds of CO2 a day breathing. There are four of us, 30 and a half days in a month. So that's 280 pounds of CO2 from our breathing. And um, 
In this particular case, for some reason, I added the e-car into here. I'm very I'm using it very little right now because of the coronavirus. I've got 40 miles six times a month. That equals to 31 pounds a month. Um, so 240 miles, 31 uh, pounds of CO2. So again, it is amazing. Only one pound for every eight miles compared to typical car one to two, but you do have that manufacturer cost. <clears throat> now we did take a road trip up to the north of California and in a, in a gas car because uh, we were social distancing in our camper van. So that was 35 gallons at 20 miles a gallon. Actually, we got 22 that trip, but I've set it at 20. So that's 700 pounds of CO2 for that. Had we used our um, electric car, it would have only been 91 pounds, but then we would have had to take a tent or a trailer. Um, so we end up with an average per person here of um, not accounting that trip of, um, 792 pounds a month. So if you go through it, food is 38% of the budget, electricity 28%, I'm sorry, gas 28%, electricity 12%, the gas car 12%, and uh, the electric car virtually nothing, but we're still having to pay off the manufacturer cost uh, in terms of our carbon budget. So, you know, we should probably add almost a thousand pounds a month over three years to pay off the car, uh, its manufacturer. So that's a brief discussion on um, our carbon impact. Now the other question is how much does uh, the government, is our share of the government, our share of infrastructure? And that's a whole another question. So uh, the first uh, uh, analysis I found uh, for the US federal government uh, would be 43 pounds a month per person, which I think is, way too low um, and then but what other people have come up with in a different study is that um, the total fossil fuel impact of our government on us would be uh, 1416 pounds for per person per month uh, now let's see if that's per month yeah that's per month so the government is producing twice as much CO2 in, uh, impact on my behalf uh, as I am for all of my activities. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, more will be revealed later. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.